was a boy, I wished I could fly. Me too. So did I. Out the window and over the trees. Oh, there's a cloud of lighter than air. Then loop de loop and up to the stars. I dreamed about flying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Girls dream? Up to the stars. I like that. Me too. Eventually, of course, we dream other dreams. We change. We grow up. It always happens. Nothing is forever. That's the rule. Everything ends. And so our story begins. Supposing these planks and ropes are now the British Empire. And we are lords. And captains. Mothers. Orphans. Sailors. Pirates. Tropical kings. And use your thoughts to hoist the sails and deck the ships that await us in this early grey and misty dawn in 1885. A crucial year in the reign of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. God save her! Who, by her grace, had only just knighted a new peer of the realm. Lord Leonard Astor, dedicated minister to the Queen and devoted father. To Molly Astor, whose mother flew up to heaven when Molly was six years old. In the years that followed, a nanny was employed to care for Molly and teach her the essentials of young womanhood. While taking her with him on each royal mission, Lord Astor gave Molly a life few girls would normally know. A life that made her insatiably curious, insufferably bright, and pretty much friendless at school. Friendless? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> friendless, you mean like? Leave me alone. Orphans, most useless creatures on earth. Look at them. Cast out by mothers who can't feed them or love them. No mothers at St. Norbert's, only schoolmasters. As much as I hate to lose you, mule, and you, and you, I won't stand in the way of opportunity. Here's to your trip on a ship. What ship? What trip? Sorry, I'm lost. Me too. Boys, we're lost. Boys. And so it was on the brink of a new adventure that, that three filthy orphans and Lord Leonard Astor, his friendless Molly, and her nanny Mrs. Bunbury, journey at dawn to the docks of Portsmouth, where two trunks are delivered to two ships sharing the very same dock. Two trunks, deliberately similar in their trunkness. One of them containing a precious cargo belonging to the Queen. God save her! To be accompanied by Leonard Astor aboard one of the ships, a spanking new frigate. Commanded by Leonard Dowd School chum, the legendary Robert Falcon Scott. Captain of the Wolf. <laughs> Fastest ship afloat, bound for the remote kingdom of Rundine. Ah, 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 and the other trunk! Full of sand, courtesy of me, Bill Slank, captain of this other ship, the Neverland. <sighs> the Neverland. A slower ship. And long in the poop. A merchant ship taking a long route to run in, just to be safe. And while nobody's looking, I'll just mark the Queen's trunk, the one supposed to go on the wasp. Then at the last second. Oh, the shark! He's going to shark! I'll switch him. Get this trunk! Hump on the Neverland of garbage! And I'll sell these boys into slavery. Cheer up, lads. You're off to run, dude. Be helpless to the king. Boot for snakes more like. Crack the boys! Coming aboard! Make a call! Say your goodbye! Why to who? There's nobody who cares! Which is why I hate, I hate, I hate grown ups! Show your cargo, start your play. I do, I do. Show that trunk in my cabin, yes, old trunk is. There's wind to the foretop, there's boys in the wood. We wait, we wait, we are all. Oh, the foretop will swell, the boys will be sold. For it's down, it's down, we go. And you got the foretops. It's down, we go. With everything safely aboard, final preparations are made on board the deck. Call all hands to man the caption, run the cable down the chrome. Heave away and say goodbye, boys, far from England, far from home. A squadron of British Navy seamen in bright, smart uniforms boards the Neverland. Led by one Lieutenant Gregor is ready to accompany Lord Leonard Astor to Her Majesty's vessel, the Wasp. Captain Scott's compliments, Your Lordship, but do join him aboard the Wasp as soon as possible. A moment, Captain Slank. Ah, uh, here, Your Lordship. I'm taking the Queen's treasure to run during the War of the Wasp, but I'll leave a more precious cargo here in the Neverland. God, mother. Mrs. Bumbrick, bring it to me. Oh, Molly, my Molly. Oh, please let me come with you. I don't like it on this ship. You're safer here in the Neverland. By the time you arrive in Rundoon, I'll have completed my mission, and we'll be together again. <sighs> oh, look, Daddy, the cat! Oh, the ship's cat! A lucky sign! Oh, here, boys, boys. Molly, careful. Oh, Daddy, I know you don't need my help in Rundoon, but I've got to stop pulling my weight sometime. 
You're all grown up, aren't you? I am, Daddy. Courage now. Promise? Promise. Oh, dear. Just then, the crater boys burst open. One of the boys almost falls out. Hanging upside down just over Molly's head. He stares at her. She stares at him. He has an air about him. The look of a boy who doesn't miss much or say much about it. Back in the box! Here, monkeys! Something about the boy makes Molly feel like she just grew up a little. Oh, away. There isn't any treasure in the Queen's trunk, but what isn't it has to be destroyed. By order of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God save her! God save her! I have to move quickly before the King of Rundoon even knows I'm there. But how are you going to destroy it? Can you keep a secret? I can. Dodo, a language known only too well. Dodos and a handful of very special humans. Dodo, a fat, clumsy bird, hence the Latin name Didus Inectus. Known for its greedy appetite, slothful pace, and sense of entitlement, the Dodo was fearless of others and faced no real competition. An eerie mirror of the British Empire at its colonial zenith. Of course, those very same traits led to the Dodo's extinction. An eerie mirror of the British Empire after its colonial zenith. But thereby hangs another tale. And don't ever take this off, or let anybody else touch it, Molly. You know it's inside this amulet, and you know how to use it if you're ever in trouble. But what if something happens to you? You need to be on the wasp. Two dips, I won't have it. But I want to be a part of the mission. If you can't be British, you can go straight home and back to school, young lady. Mrs. Bum... No, don't send me home. I'll be good, I promise. Oh, shut your faucet, Molly, blubbering like a whale when the world is your oyster. Be a woman. Yes, Nana. As soon as I'm done running, we'll take a few weeks off in the Antipodes. Scare up some rare bird eggs, hmm? I might even teach you to speak porpoise. Yes, Daddy. There's my little star catcher. Just an apprentice. If I were a star catcher, I'd be on the wasp with you. Slank is that word. Star catcher. But the cannon is fired from the deck of a wasp. Patience, daughter. Keep a keen eye, Mrs. Bunbury. Don't you worry, my lord. We shall be British to the bone. We'll meet again in Rundoon. Godspeed. Uh, off you go, your lordship. Uh, then. Copy all we. That's nice. Now off! Where are you, you good for nothing back of the scum? Eh? Lock these two in their cabins. For safekeeping, I'm taking no chances. No, you ain't uh, just uh, uh, I don't fancy. No dainty daughters looming at my deck. Now, hop it. Of course. The cabin could smell no worse than you. <laughs> oh, no. can we have Kitty with us? Stay clear of the pussy pit. Rip your hand clean off. Just say the word, madam. I might let you out later for a promenade. Maybe do some petting of her own. Don't trouble yourself, I'm sure. Come along, my girl. Oh, don't worry, ma'am. Alf will see you safely stowed. Oh, I why, thank you, kind sir. No, thank you, kind lady. Your eyes as green as the sea, <laughs> and your hair is almost as wavy. <laughs> no, take me below, sir. Rock the city, cow! Hit the tune, you sweet! What do you sneer at? Get the gurus, put that trunk in my cabin! Put on that chip! Have that blind of Rubberstan! Boy, you curse the day you were ever born! Hunter, I'm doing your fungus! There's profitable trade to be made! Here I'm doing that! Ain't what it used to be. Of course, back in my salad days, there was a green girl bringing up rats in the big breezy brownstone in Brighton. It was a tight spot too, and hell on the house hotel. 
especially the kitchen boy, a lovely island lad who cooked a cunning cannellini and a post of zool to make you drool. But oh, it's made the master mad how the mistress moaned for her manicotti. He bid that boy something brutal, but the boy never said boo. Point is, we must button our beaks and be brave like that boy. Oh, my name is not Betty Bumbrick. I know you are terrified that you may never clap your eyes on your father again. And it cuts me to the core. Oh, but never show that sorry slag. The slag is never fear. There are men who can smell it on you, Molly. And, and once myself. It's dreadful business. Oh, Mr. Bumbrick fell off the twig years ago. Let who would have 40? 30. Oh, is that food? I'm awfully hungry. The same for now, ladies. It's for the pigs down the other end. Pigs? Really? May I help you feed them? Oh, my mother loves all of God's little creatures, you know. Not these creatures, she doubt. But don't despair. Cook's laying on some yummy meat in the galley. I'll escort you when it's up. Oh, nothing too rich, pray. We ladies must watch our waistline. Been thinking about getting in shape myself. Uh, round as a shape. Sorry? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I am so sure you are quite the specimen. No, I have flabby thighs. But fortunately, my stomach covers them. Let's be off. <laughs> TTFN. He's rough, but he's right, that house. He smelt like smelt. But there, true, but there's a whiff of... Oh, hero about him, mark my words. Left the cabin door jar. I could follow him and feed the piggies. Oh, Mello Nana, please. Molly, Molly, come back here. Don't make me come after you. Pig duty. I'm going down to Pilch to feed the swine. Whew. God save her. Down. But I'm hungry! Ooh, 
It's a lucky day, then, ain't it? Finally! You'll want to swallow that down quickly, Van Affetti. And good? Uh, it's alive! It's worms. He fed me worms! I won't eat that! Please, sir, is there a vegetarian alternative? <laughs> In my day, pigs weren't quite so particular. Don't hog it or give me! You said you wouldn't eat it! You wait! What are you doing? You'll get us a beating! Hey, believe it, you. I'm called Mister on this vessel. I mark respect for a lifetime of seafaring. Never mind him. He's got a real problem with authority. <laughs> so do I. Look, I know worms is rough vittles, but they'll grease the pipes down till we set you down and run doing. A question, mister? One. Do we have to stay down here in the dark? Till Slank hands you over to Zarboff. Is the king nice to his helpers? That's two. I got a sick feeling about this. Or think of something. No, you won't. <laughs> In my experience, boys are sadly slow thinkers. What is it? What are you? I'm a girl. No way. We saw a girl once. Headmaster's daughter. It was nothing like you. It was a roar, roar, gonna get ya. Who's the leader here? Who wants to know? Molly Astor. Dr. Pretorius back at home says I have an extraordinarily high level of brain power. If you're so smart, how come you're stuck on this dirt bucket? I'm not stuck. I'm going to meet my father in Rundoon. He has important things to do. We have important things to do. No, we don't. I'm the leader and I say we've got some things. He's not the leader. You! you. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 13. I'm 13. Wait, I just remembered today's my birthday. I'm 15. If you were 13 and today's your birthday, you'd be 14. I only celebrate odd number birthdays. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are, I'm still the leader. The leader has to be a boy. Hey, a far end of the ship we get served proper food. I could lead you there, which would make me the leader. Proper food, really? Just tell me your names. Why should we? Only that, if you have names, they serve you meat. Ten on ten. But I can't tell me for these food upsets. I am not food upset. Do you write poems about pie? To pass the time. Pie beans in your blanket. It's a blood sugar thing. Faint at the merest whisper of, get this, sticky pudding. Sticky pudding. It's so good. Like I said, food obsessed. I'm Prentice, I'm in charge here. Ever notice, Ted, the more you claim leadership, the more it eludes you? Aw, oh, snap. And what are you, boy? Leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry. Don't take it personally. He's rude to everybody. It's why he gets beaten. And why he's got no friends. <laughs> Go on, tell your name, why don't you? <laughs> What's so funny? He doesn't have a name. Been awfully too long to remember. <laughs> Ramkin calls him <laughs> your. <laughs> Go on, you and your stupid names go follow some stupid girl. Like we need your permission, friendless. Doesn't cost any more to be nice. Charmless. What about the food? You can be like temporary leader, but only till we eat. Fair warning, boy. I shall expose you utterly. As if no one had ever shown the slightest interest in him before, the boy's eyes began to sparkle and the love of competition wiped away from his face. Right, follow me. Right, follow mother. Molly. That's what I said, follow Molly. The boy may have wished to be alone, but he didn't really mean it. The sparkle in his eyes fades, and strange sounds in the dark make him remember the orphanage, make him think about... Where's that mule? Here, sir. You are all shades of nasty mule. I look at this filth. Don't hit me, sir. Cesspit's dirty work. A mule afraid of his own shadow? Be a man. Thank you, Mr. Grebkin. Uncover yourself. Disgrace to the mother that left you. You watch or you're next. At the mention of mother, the boy heard a whisp of a song he could barely remember and saw a shadow of a home he hoped he might have. Father and son. Mother and child. And he goes all around for hope. Still he believed, despite his distress and sorrow, that one day such a home would be his. Home. Life is meant to be horrible. Orphan rule number two. There are no orphans in heaven. Orphan rule number two.
Number three! Mrs. Grebton's ugly. <laughs> Anyone who laughs is dead. Mother, mother. Come on, you! Last chance. We asked this do not leave boys behind. The Wasp, where Molly's father, Lord Asper, has been ushered roughly below deck. Captain Scott's cabin, your lordship. Do you go in, awfully cramped for captain's quarters. No fools on a frigate, sir. Sanchez, pull the door to. That's a good fellow. Where's the captain, lieutenant? Oh, I'm no lieutenant. I told a lie. Unthinkable British never lie. When pirates do, don't we, boys? Yeah, 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 yeah. I demand to see Captain Scott. Oh, why didn't you say so? Presto, Scott -o. What? Robbie, how dare you release this man? I'll take the key to that trunk of yours. You'll have to kill me first. Well, we were going to kill you second. But I'm flexible. He's coming off. In a nasty mood. A foul and nasty mood. What are you playing at? Pirates, sir. The Wasp is now a pirate ship. Your British crews in chains below. There have been no pirates in these parts for hundreds of years. You've been keeping a very low profile. <laughs> and you're the captain, I suppose. I, sir. I, sir, you, sir. No, sir, not Smee, sir. Smee, sir. That's me, sir, but no captain, I, sir. You lie, sir. Oh, no, sir. The devil himself's in charge hereabouts. The devil, you say. The prince of darkness. A satanic supervisor. Foul and nasty with the club and who. <laughs> how would one identify him in a crowd? By his legendary cookie duster, that's how. Whiskers? His celebrated mouth brow, that's how. Well, does he have a name? The pirate captain they call Black Star! Oh! This is the ship! 
Now cough up that key, my lord. Not a chance, you thug. I say, Smee, is that my lord's coat you're holding? It looks to be about this size, Captain. Hmm, what the well-dressed thug is wearing this season. So co-main in foe, Captain, so very co-main in foe. I say, Smee, what is it that the men call me? Nancy, sir? <laughs> <laughs> no, the other oh, Rootless, sir, rootless, heartless, and tears. Guilty as charged. Now give us the key. Never. Playing games is for children, Lord Ass. And I hate, I hate, I hate children! Bring it in, Gomez! He stands her, sir. Just bring it in, thanks ever so! The wasp is my ship now, and everything aboard her belongs to me, including that trunk Queen Victoria thinks nobody knows about. Silly old queen. God save her! Queen. God save her! Victoria. God save her! Banana. God save her! <laughs> Here's two things. When I open this swag, I'll be the single most significant pirate in the world, solar system, or any other place has yet to be discovered in the universe. That's only one thing. The second thing is a dilemma, a large one. The Cadillac Escalade of Dilemmas. In point of fact, poor little bird tells me that your darling daughter is sailing to Rundoon off the safer southern route aboard the Naval Nerd. The Neverland, sir. Huh? The Neverland, sir. Oh, Naval Nerd, Neverland. Same letters. I was pretty darn close. Splitting rabbits, really. Yes, uh, sir. Oh, well, um, splitting hairs, that too. Oh, just a second. I know you love your Molly above rubies. What say you to a quick detour? We pluck her off the ship and, um, you can watch her die. Unless you're feeling a weensy bit more amenable. Ooh, love your locket, but what's in your pocket, tell now, me? <clears throat> Done and dusted, kippers and custard, here's the key, boys! to imagine. Because there they are, and there's the cat. And that cat is definitely flying. And those bells are definitely ringing. And that cabin is definitely glowing. Glowing, ringing, flying, it can only mean one thing. Star stuff. Star stuff. The Queen's trunk is in Slag's cabin. Okay, nothing to see here, move along. But that cat was... No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tubby's right. Your neck thing was... Totally bringing, and, and that cat was totally flying. Hey, you know it'd be fun. How's about a bedtime story? What's that? Oh, ha ha, very amusing. Oh my gosh, you poor things. You've never had a bedtime story. This might sound kind and offensive. Hard to have a bedtime when you don't have a bed. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean uh, to. Tell you what, you say sorry so easy, like. The rough patch moved over. No hard feelings and everything's fixed. Well, no. Th there's dark. A mass of darkness in the world. And if you get trapped in that cave like us, it beats you down. Sorry you can't fix it. 
Better to say nothing than sorry. When it's night and I'm too scared to sleep, I look through the cracks, you know, between the wood nailed over the window, and I can see all those little stars that I can't reach. And I think that in a hundred years, or two or three hundred maybe, boys will be free. And life will be so beautiful that nobody will ever say sorry again. Because nobody will have to. I think about that a lot. Well, that's more than he said in the last 13 years. So, bedtime stories, not a big priority, okay? No, it's not okay. I'm giving you one. It's a gift, least I can do. Like, um, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty's a good one. You'll like it. There's a kiss in it. True love's kiss. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Then I'll tell you. <laughs> Come on, back to your cabin and I'll be mother. Now, the story of Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, that's how they always start. Once upon a time, a beautiful baby was born. Sounds treasure hath put my piratical BVDs in a twist. How wrong you are. Yes, I'd like to be hip deep in diamonds, but they're a poor substitute for what I really crave. A bona fide hero to help me feel whole, for without a hero, what am I? A pirate in part, half a villain, ruthless but toothless. And then I saw heroic old you, and I thought, could it be? Is he the one I waited for? Would he, for example, give up something precious for the daughter he loves? But alas, he gives up sad. Now, let's see. Hero with treasure, very good. Hero with no treasure, doable. No hero and a trunk full of sand, not so much. Now, where's my treasure? What if they swap the trunk, sir? Swapped, you say? Oh, stupid ideas, me stupid, stupid. Swapped, yes, switched right there on the dice. The deck, in which case? The trunk with the treasures upon the Neverland. Destiny check. What do we know about the Neverland? She's a slow ship, Captain. Sadly slow. And what of our ship? The Wasp. She's fast, Captain. Super fast. Which means we're leagues ahead of her by now, Einstein. Change of course, hard about. You're behind this swappery ass or I'm the Queen of England. God save her! Oh, shut up! I said hard about, Gomez! Thank her, sir. Hit the petal, Gretel. Thank her, sir. Burn rubber, Bubba! I do me! Kendamonio! They will put the star! Give me it, you shroom! You paint peanuts! You get monkeys! Now shoot it! The chase is on! The die is cast. The game's afoot. I want that treasure, boys. <laughs> Catch me in Neverland. Around the castle. 
Council keeping everybody out. Everybody but one man. Boys! Uh, the the prince, prince, right? The Prince, yes. Very good. He chopped his way to Sleeping Beauty's room, saw his true love, and kissed her. Just once, sweetly on the lips. Mmm, pork. And true love's kiss broke the spell. The princess found her prince, and they all lived. <coughs> the end of the game! Talk to me, Daddy! With the wasp race against flank speed, Leonard Astor clears his mind and tries to reach Molly. Daddy, are you there? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Daddy, the Queen's trunk is here on board the Neverland. Not in English, too dangerous. Oh dear, please don't speak in. <coughs> oh, Daddy, not Dodo. <coughs> Over by pirates. Oh, pirates, all oh, that had I sound is so tricky. Molly, the wasp is racing straight towards the Neverland. As soon as we catch you, steer clear of Blackstash and bring the trunk to me. I win. Don't let me down, Doctor. This is your mission now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. What? 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 What are you oh, doing? Sorry. Oh, what? Get below, boy. If Slank sees you on deck, he'll rear you up like You that. were talking to your neck, then. No, I wasn't. I know what I saw. Well, there was. There was this porpoise swimming alongside the ship, and it was making those funny noises that porpoises make, and I thought I'd make some funny noises too. That's all. So you were talking to a fish? Porpoises are not fish. They're mammals, just like you, or Germans. Then how come your next thing blows and rings all by itself? It's for swimming. I'm a good swimmer. It's a swimming medal. Right, swimming, sure, and what's faster? Decision. I'm going to trust you. Why? I'm just a boy. I know. Pity. You like to look at the stars? Well, there they are. There's so many. They look safe, don't they? Sparkling up there like diamonds. I like it when they shoot across the sky. Shoo! Sometimes little bits fall to earth. Little bits that look like sand. Can you keep a secret? I can. Those little bits are star stuff. The Queen's trunk and Slang's cabin is full of it. There's someone here too in case I'm ever in trouble. Whoa, star stuff? Let me see. No! It changes people if they touch it. How? Different ways, depending on what they want to be. So if somebody gets their hands on this star stuff and... And they're evil and greedy like Genghis Khan or the hungry for world domination like Caesar or Napoleon or, you know, Anne Rand. Who's that? Oh, didn't you learn anything in that orphanage? I was kind of busy trying not to die. Oh. So if star stuff's so dangerous, why are you after it? I'm a star catcher. There's the only six and a half of us on this planet and we have special powers that we use in secret to keep star stuff away from tyrants who try to rule the world. You mean like Queen Victoria? God save her! God save her! I know that's different. She doesn't need star stuff to rule the world. She's British. So you're a what's it? Star catcher. Like I said, there's only six and a half of us on this planet. Six and a half? I'm still an apprentice. Okay, so prove it. What? Go on, amaze me with your special powers. It's not a magic show. I'm not like some magician guy. Well, I mean, if you can't actually do anything. Fine, whatever. To have faith is to have wings. Whoa! Satisfied? So the cat was flying. Come on, I want to fly too, like you and the cat. Get serious, will you? The star stuff has to be destroyed. You want me to destroy it? Oh, don't be ridiculous. My father is going to throw it in the world's hottest active volcano, Mount Jalapeno. Where's that? Rondoon, wouldn't you know it? Problem is, King Zarbuff would kill for even a thimble of star stuff. Hey, I can help, see? I'm going to be the king's new helper. So when I get to Rondoon, I'll just ask him... You're not going to be his helper. You're going to be snake food. Zarbuff likes to buy orphans and feed them to his snakes. So Grimkin lied. King Zarbuff III is evil. He's the worst Zarbuff yet. 
Grown-ups always lie. It's all they ever do. You want to help? Then help me get that trunk to my father. You know what? Forget it. Why should I help anybody? What's anybody ever done for me? You! Snake food, really? I told you to stay in your crate, orphan sludge. When exactly are you going to tell us that? That's it. Bill Slake is drawing the line. I may not have been born with the silver spoon at me bum, but that doesn't mean I won't stir my tea with one. Ew. That's gross. Get below, boy! Oh, he's not going below. He's going over! Let go! Let me go! Starbuck promise me the whole bleeding fleet in exchange for my trunk and my cabin. Strong gusts of protein! Wind tech 34 knots! I hate brown ups! Make like a kitten! And take a long, long time to drown. Bottoms up, boy. Not overboard, please. I can't go what. Swim! Here I am, boy. All will be well.
have something of ours. Save your trunk, Bill. Get that trunk to stop off, and you'll be too push to push. Wait, 67 knots! That's too hot! Everybody! That's, That's too hot! Saving your own neck. Like, like what? what? Like helping Molly. And up on deck, two captains square off for the greatest of grand prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out on this stormy night for our featured bout. In this corner from Slough by way of Death Pond, with the intimacy issues and the claggy knickers, it's no mother's son and no man's pal, Bill the Rat Bastard Slam! since the tender age of ten, the most fearsome <laughs> pirate on the pipe. All hands on deck for the Black Stash! <laughs> this is a one-round knockout match. Kicking, spitting, and gouging is preferred. Hitting below the belt is not required, though the fans tend to like it. We like it! Now shake hands and come out rhyming! Ooh. Take a hike, give me the crumb, but that soup is mine. I think it's me bar. I'll kiss you, Bill, with me French roaster, roly coaster, uppercut the flip of flop. Which I don't try so behind your back, which needs a wax here by the by. Oh, me God's anointed, the double jointed, terrible pointed, that he Or me on your knees, he easy peasy, job and easy, bow fry. Me dog's dinner, me shark shanker, me winkle thinner, me walk the flanker. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Oh! Ah! There he lies, a jumped up cabin boy who doesn't know his place. Give me the queen's trunk or say your goodbyes, you bathtub captain. Crack! The sound is butchering wood! Get us whipped by the wings! Crap! The jet is breaking up! Max at once, and Max no more! The Neverland! She's split in two! Seven, seven, four, nine! A whole ship half! A thousand ship! A thousand ship! It's broken half made by the storm! It's a big the chunk, and that's all there is to it! Oi! You're ready, Mr. Greggy, but bay! You and your sea green eyes. Don't you let him spell your fee money. And the hazel. Out. Let the hand. Out of my way. All I want is me to run. Don't ye touch an air on any woman's legs. She's all yours, lava boy. Now, babe. Ah. 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 Oh, the way. Swallow me up, a great shroud of sea, and the sharks start nibbling away like me mother's kisses. Voila! Ye left me on the steps of a tattoo parlor, wrapped in a half eaten bag of fish and chips. Round me neck I know, I'm the belt flag, tail wicked to head well. Did you think? Good for nothing, bag of the scum. Oh, my light, nice. Now let's get moving. Molly and Molly have locked the room cabin. Daddy, the trunk is ours. Bring it to me. A bit of chip. A bit of chip. Check your trunk. Some trunks stay up here. I didn't think I'd have a trunk. Help, boy. I need more time to get the Queen's trunk to my father. Don't worry, I'll stall the pirates. Crazy weather, huh? What are you? Oh, what are you? What am I? Lester! Never heard of you. Liar! The stash is on everyone's lips. 
Why is that the Queen's trunk you're sitting on? Oh yeah, Queen's trunk, totally. Molly Astor told me to protect it. From who? The pirates like you. But we have all the fun. Yeah, you do? Absolutely, a little swash, a bit of buckle. You'd love it more than bread. Now give me the Queen's trunk and join the party. Appellation, please. Your name, Bob. No name, orphan. You're more at sea than Columbus, boy. If you were a pirate, you'd have a proper name. You could do that? I'm the boss, ain't I? How's about, um, Long John Larry? Bluebeard Book. Oh, we hung a bloke a week ago Wednesday on the yard. Pirate Pete, that's available. Pirate Pete. Good solid name, Peter. Like a rock. That's what you'll be, boy. You'll be my rock. Peter, yeah, I like that. Iconic as the moonwalk in a Michael Jackson video. Now give me the truck. And what would I do? You'd star in my nasty crew. Infamy, calamity, fraternity. You need to connect, boy. Uh, Peter. You need to connect, Peter. No man is an archipelago. Nah. Be a good Peter and give your captain his great big treasure. Again. You blew it, Stash. The Queen's trunk safe on the wasp. We saved the treasure, Molly. We saved the world. You're killing my buzz, boy. To which I say, jump! Not again! Not again! The boy's gone overboard! Molly, bring me the trunk! Help! I can't swim! But, Daddy, the boy needs help! Molly, this is a direct order. Bring me the trunk! This trunk floats, boy! My name's Peter. Peter, I like it. Me too! There's an island, Peter!
slightly wondering what we've had to drink now. And you may think now we've gone too far. But something we should not have been exposed to, we got too close to by swimming after features arrived. And here we are. And it was the stuff from the sky that made each fish the lovely dish before your eyes. Now fins of fingers. supposed to be guarding the trunk. No. What if she came and I, I did what you said, Mole! Dragged it right up a mountain. Nope, no Molly. Holy, so bright. Know what that is? That must be the sun. I'm feeling you, sun. And check it out. Space, light, air, I'm finally free. <laughs> and I'm gonna have freedoms, whatever I want. Whoa, hey bird, what's up? Me? Well, let's see. Uh, save the world. Got a name, not too shabby. I just, I wonder if Teddy and Prentice made it off the ship before it sank. I mean, how weird would it be if they... Please let them be okay. Hey, Bird, we should make a pact. I don't leave you, you don't leave me, deal? Wait, Bird, come back! I don't want to be alone, come back! Back, back, back! Hey, fine. No Teddy, no Prentice, no Molly, so what? Nobody's after me with a stick? Nothing between me and the sky. I could just be a boy for a while. It's all I want anyway. I gotta get out of here. Sorry, did you want to be alone? No, stay with me. Good answer. Thank you. Get this. Teddy floats. 
The two of us jumped overboard and I held on to Ted. And the two of us bobbed all the way here. Prentice. No name. I got one now. It's Peter. Solid. Whatever. Hey, look, the wasp. Way out there. You see it? It's still in one piece. Oh, no. I see where this is going. Where's Mother? Oh, for the love of her name is Molly. And she probably drowned. No! <laughs> no, she dove off the ship as it went down. She's like, like a real swimmer. I think maybe she made it to the wasp, or maybe she's floating on what's left of the Neverland. Right, this wreckage, uh, Romeo! Get us to shore and make it fast! Oh, you want speed? Find me sail! But if we keep drifting like this, Alf, we'll end up in China. And I am in no mood for Mooshu. The last time I had it, it went through me like a winter wind in Wessex. Or maybe Moggy's down there in the jungle. I say we wait for her here. Come on, help me hide the trunk, and we'll find some branches down on the beach. At some point, we're going to need food. Branches, branches, what we need are branches. Hey, I think I found some. Sweet. Ow. Branches, branches. The guy's got Jones branches. To build a raft, you know, to make it to the wasp. We get to the wasp, Molly's father will have to take us. Where? Home. Everyone holds hands and nobody gets lost. Clear? Crystal. Ew, your hands all sweaty. Yeah, because perspiration's the mark of true leadership. Are we good? Yes. You there, Peter? Here. You there, Ted? Present. You there, Prentice? Prentice? There? Teddy, you're holding on to Prentice. Teddy? Guys, where is everybody? Pino Bianco, Treviano, Mosca, Pino Grigio. You said hang on to each other, Peter? Yoki! Where are you, Peter? Crowley! I'm here, Ted. Yoki! I'm scared, Peter. Pinoli! I can't see a thing. Yoki! Help, gorillas! Oh, hello. Who was that? Cannelloni! Chianti! It's me, sir! Liguini! Pino Rosso Montepulciano! Hot enough for ya? How do you eat this? Don't have the jetto! There! Footprints! Something's chasing me! Montepulciano! Montepulciano! Who is that? What the? Chianti! I'm right behind you! Liguini! And I want that trunk! Do you want some tea? Liguini! And a biscuit, me. Help, I'm hungry! Help, I'm lost! I'm gonna find ya! Chianti! I'll find you, Ted! Keep heading down. I'm sweating, Smee. Which way is down? Prentice, Teddy, guys, you hear me? Hungry, Peter. Want that treasure? I'm the leader. Want that treasure? Help me, Peter. Want that trunk? World class summer that we know me to be. I reached the island in record time. I'm awfully glad I saved the boy, even if Daddy's furious. Saving the whole world's a bit abstract for a 13 year old. Putting a human face on it makes it more jolly. Oh, this training bra is so irksome. Now, I really must fetch Daddy's trunk and bring it back to the wasp, or my first ever mission will be my last. Don't worry, Peter. Wherever you are, I'll find you. Vino Rosso, Monte Bocciano, Toccato, Cecco. Primi Prazo, Toby Gaminetto. Hello, I am king of the island, and you boys are my prisoners. Lasagna! You three will do nicely. You speak English? If I must. Preferez-vous que je parle français? But you're savages. <gasps> we mollusks are no savages. I know where savagery is, boy. When I was young man, English landed here. Took me to your island in chains. Many years of service, kitchen slave in not so great Britain. Until by kindness of fate, a shipwreck brought my father back to Mollusk Island. Yes. In your language, my name is Fighting Prawn. This is my son, Hawking Clam. <laughs> my son shall wear this hat once worn by my brutal British masters. For years I was a kitchen slave. He beat me raw, but I was brave. Until one day, I put him in his grave with a plate of voice imposter! <laughs> Thank you. Come, it is time. Time? Feeding time. Feeding time, finally! Not where you eat, piggy boy. Where you are eaten. You must answer to the law of Mr. Grin. Who's Mr. Grin? We worship him and he protects us from foreign troublemakers. Come, we feed you now to this crocodile. Wait, please don't feed us to any crocodile. First, first take us to Mr. Grin. Mr. Grin is crocodile. Pasta. Wait, we can give you great gifts. Auntie Pasta. You say gift. A story, yeah. A bedtime story. We'll give you one. 
Sleeping Beauty, right guys? Sleeping Beauty, yeah. The thing is, I nodded off before the end. Maybe they will too and we can get out of here. We give you story, you let us live, and we leave your island. Deal? Okay, okay. But if I am not entertained, it's Mr. Grimm for all of you. Assume your position. You have one minute. One minute? What am I supposed to do in one minute? I can't transform. I can't inhabit the character. Bring me the holy relic of my captivity. Here, mighty father, the kitchen timer. One minute starting now. Uh, once upon a time. Once upon a time, that's how they always start. Upon a time, upon a time. Tick tock, tick tock, hungry Mr. Grin. Okay, okay, once upon a time, there was a beautiful baby princess. Wow. And an evil witch with a curse. Oh ha ha. Wow. Oh ha ha. Wow. Oh ha ha. And the curse was very terrible, for every time the baby cried, oh, wow. the whole kingdom would fall asleep. Wow. Oh ha ha. Wow. Oh ha ha. Wow. Oh, and beauty was her name So the king marched over to his favorite horse Yay! and rode to the tallest tree and climbed to the top to speak to the wise old owl. Ooh. The king, a real leader, sort of like me. Yay! Focus, piggy boy. Piggy boy. Sticky pudding. Sticky pudding. It's so good. <laughs> Fifteen seconds, Mr. Grin. And soon the princess was old enough to talk. Hi, I'm 16, I'm beautiful, and I'm in the market for something long term. But nobody could stay awake long enough to kiss her. And everybody got so sleepy all of a sudden. And that's the story of Sticky Pudding. Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty. Beauty! Wait! <laughs> that's not the end! They missed the whole emotional arc of the story. Where'd you come from? Good another English. And your time is up. You should have stayed hidden, Molly. You abused the concept of the Theta Collective. It was too much for me. Although, Ted has real talent. Hey! I have talent! They liked me! They really liked me! What's so funny? Well, you called her Molly. Well, it's my name. Molly! In our language, Molly. Meets Great Boo! <laughs> Wait! Entertained, mighty father. First prize. You got me with squid poop. Two thumbs up, two thumbs away up. So you let us live, right? That was the deal. Which is so great, see? Because you need us. We can do all the things you guys don't want to do anymore. We're foreigners. That's what we're for. Nice try. But the law's law. All English must die. Calamari. Such life and death decisions are generally made by the English, not for the English. Worse yet, the walls of Mr. Grin's cage are very high, too high for any boy or girl to climb, and too dark to see the crocodile in front of your face. And those hard things the boys are sitting on, they feel like bones. All in all, it's a bad day to be British. Teddy, I hope that was your stomach. I want to go home. What home? He made a deal with us and he lied, just like they always do. I hate grown-ups. Do something, Prentice. You're the leader. Have a plan. Uh, Eat the kitchen timer and leave us alone. Oh, great. Now we can count the seconds till we die. This is all your fault, Molly. Making me feel like this big man who's going to save the world. Well, I'm not a big man and I can't save anything. Not a good time for a hissy, Peter. You failed, so you try again. My father always says that. Then let him save us. I should have given the chunk to my father, and then he'd have all the star stuff and... Molly, you idiot. She's cracking up. No, maybe she has a plan. I do. I have a plan. Eyes. Look at the eyes. This amulet is my plan. The star stuff inside is my plan. You with this boy, or is it soak and die? I'm with you, I'm with you. Good. It's a better team with you on it, Peter. Here it comes. Now, Peter, get him dope and wide. Tasty boy, fresh today. Come and eat me. Duck. <laughs> fills the air, and Mr. Grin begins to coo, gurgle, and grow. Bigger every second. Giant mouth. Giant teeth. 
giant appetite until the crocodile shatters through his bamboo enclosure. And, and airborne the Leviathan! So basically, I'm thinking, let's... Get out too! Those filthy, rotten, stinking English! They ruined bedtime story! English ruined everything! Why do they have to make Mr. Grimm so big? We catch and kill the mighty father! What? Leave Peter Boy and Little Miss Squid Poop for me! Then Fighting Brown will butterfly and deep fat fry! Scappy! Butterfly, butterfly and deep fat fry! Butterfly and deep fat fry! Oh, set me down, you dozy prat. I can't go another step. That shrink is hard to find, Captain. So it is, elusive as the melody in a Philip Glass opera. Rest yourself a while. It's me, your tracky treasure solo. Negaroni. We'll trick the puling spawn and bring them hither, but... How to do it? How to smoke a out? We could lure him, so. Lure him, you say? Oh, stupid ideas, me, stupid, stupid. Lure him, yes. Right down here to the bush. Beach. Beach, in which case we shall need... A magnet. A really big one. That'll attract him. It's me. It's me. I know your heart's in the right place, but... It's me. You've been hitting the three-bean couscous again, haven't you? We're in tie, Captain. Wait, I have it. Captain? Lucky for me you saved your ukulele. Captain Stash! A siren song is what we need, me, and you're going to be the luscious siren. Whoa, big cry! He's chewing all the scenery, sir! Not in my scene, he ain't! Spare me the theatrics, you reptilian ham! <laughs> Abandoned spleen. Scene! Scene! Abandoned scene! Ah! Grab anything that looks like it'll float. We're getting out of here. No! First take me to the trunk. Remember the mission. Forget the trunk. The trunk is safe. What we need is a raft. It's not your decision, Peter. Protect the trunk. That's the mission. You always have to have it your way, don't you? What's that? Blinking fierce. Oh, it's father! Father! Oh, good! He's signaling me all the way from the wasp. What's it mean? Oh, it's Norse code. He's using Norse code, everyone. I'm sorry, but don't you mean Morse code? Not Morse code, Norse code. From Norway, the ancient Viking signaling system. That's ridiculous. What's he saying? Unless I miss my guess, he's saying, Merle bella furnacina hina furna. And then he says, Ungitsi mali dos blingin. That's first stick mali to the trunk. Goomba and the high water. That's remember the mission. Very convenient. Un get a bling and doze a plonkin. That's first take the trunk down to the beach. Merle bell the furna. Father be there with the longboat. See the hind the furna will be hind the furna um safe. If we could just get past the pirates and make it to the beach. Then toot it in the flunkin' ass and neck of first cathooter. Neighbor, neighbor, ness and neighbor, nunca, binta, rupa, lenka, sink and hook and keep the motor cooking, unka, dunka, papa. Love, daddy. <laughs> Women are tricky, man. I feel kind of stupid not knowing Norwegian. Oh, it isn't a contest. Though, if it were, I'd win. And the running, you're really fast, faster than me. Well, you're a better leader. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take me to the trunk. The mollusks! The, the mollusks! <laughs> we'll have to outrun them. Take the guys with you. I'll get the mollusks to follow me. Hear that, Prentice? That's the sound of a leader. I'm not leaving you. Afraid I'll beat you to the top? As if. Bravo, Peter. Here I am, mollusks. Come and get me. Bounding through the jungle and up to the mountains. Pierce thoughts are only about running the natives. Try and catch me, fighting prawn! And the faster he runs, the further he gets. From the terrible beatings! The boarded of Gorits! The smell of the filth from the dodge of the cave. And the further he runs, the more that he smiles. From saving the others and being a leader. Till, panting and jumping and practically flying, Peter feels something entirely new. Alive! And all of a sudden surrounding his head. Get out of my face, bird. I can't see where I'm going. And that's when he misses the ledge and falls. Leaving the moss with no one to chase. Molly! Yes! 
Downing down he bumps and bruises. Down a deep dark crevice as gravity beckons. Crooking her finger and winking her eye and Peter falling for her big time. And rushing up to meet him is a solid sheet of glass. Slash! His brutal fall is broken. And not his neck. And not by glass at all. But by a shimmering lake of golden water, far, far underground. He should have been drowning, should have been afraid. But he was neither drowning nor afraid. Peter bobbed to the surface, safe as you please, and began to get his bearings. The water was thick, like oil, and warm, like a rich man's bath. And looking down fondly at Peter was... A mermaid! Well, well, nice of you to drop in. My name's Teacher, that's what I'm called. And yes, I speak English. And I know your name is Peter. I know a lot of things. Where am I? In a hurry. That's right. I was running away from the mollusk natives. They're trying to kill us, and we just want to get home. Yeah, life is complicated. I was going to build a raft, you know, to get to the wasp. But Molly's father You don't is... need a raft to get home, and you don't need the wasp. All you need is star stuff. How do you know about Listen stuff? Listen to teacher. When you rode the trunk to this island, sea water seeped inside. Then the star stuff in the trunk enchanted the water. And then the water enchanted the fish in the wake of the trunk. And then the waves... But how do you know about this I'm stuff? not finished. Then the waves washed up into this grotto where I was swimming. So you used to be a fish? Scott Salmon. This is way cooler, FYI. The star stuff will change you too. It makes you what you want to be. But I just want to be a boy for a while. Couldn't I just be a boy? Well, I suppose. Once you sit in the star stuff... Yeah, then, then what? Sky's the limit. You could even fly yourself home, maybe, just like you dreamed. And find your family. In which case, you're going to need something first. A name. Instead of Peter? In addition to. A family name. And we've come up with a good one, haven't we? And in the water or the grotto or both, a whisper, an echo, or both seem to answer. Pan. 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 What are you, boy? I'm Peter. Pan. 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 Pan? You mean like in the kitchen? Oh, you are just too cute. I mean two things, actually. First is fun and frolic, anarchy, mischief, all the things a boy likes to Fun? Be. Okay, I'm Peter Pan. There, you're changing already. You said Pan means two things. What's the second thing? Shouldn't you be on your way? Molly's going to beat you to that trunk. Molly! Molly! The trunk! <laughs> Molly, the natives got him, and I feel terrible. Ow! We all feel terrible. But Peter's out of the running, which means we can finally settle the question of what, for better words, one might deem leadership. Cripes, a floating tomato! Say what? That red dot on the horizon! Betty, you're a genius! Woo! A vast behind. My bloomers have stood up to stronger winds than this elf. Full speed ahead! They're safe. That's good. Oh, I wish Peter were here. The mission comes first. Now let's get the drunk to the beach. Come on, move it! The night that Ted and Prentice spent dragging the trunk down to the beach was worse than any night at the orphanage. Because the rain isn't like the rain in England. It falls like stones and hurts your head. And you can't see because there's trees. In front of trees. Surrounded by trees, smacking your face. You can't breathe from the bugs. And the beetles flying. Crawling, sticky, crunchy. And they're in your mouth. And up your nose. And down your front. So you take cover and you wait out the storm. You can forget about sleep. Because it's way too scary out there and there's a trunk to save. And you still have to reach the beach. I said, forget about sleep, Teddy. He spark out. Oh, Peter, oh, Peter, I thought... The most incredible thing you won't believe, I met this. Right, well, good to see you, Peter. Shall we wake the boys? Been kind of a long day, leave him be. Just us then? Yeah, just us. We should probably check on the star stuff, make sure it's okay. No, that's not, no. I want to sit in the star stuff. No, very dangerous. Exposure to so much of it. I don't care. Well, I do. I was so worried. We waited and waited. I told them you'd come. We waited. 
and then the rain and the dark, and I was so worried. I'm here. Do you think I've changed? You're dirtier. Well, I've been meaning to ask you about the, um, well, you know, about that thing that you did. What thing? The kiss, okay? The kiss. What kiss? The kiss? The one you gave me. Oh, the kiss. What kiss, she says. Well, what about it? It's just that nobody's ever wanted to kiss me before, that's all. Wanted to? I, I didn't want to. We were about to be eaten alive and... I mean, I, I was just standing there and you grabbed me. Oh, for heaven's sake, such a fuss. Didn't you like it? It was... Oh, you didn't like it. You didn't like it. And now you're telling me you didn't like it. Unbelievable. I'm not saying I didn't like it. Mm, poor... Then what are you saying? I guess I'm saying... I, I guess I'm asking... You stop that right now. I won't answer any such question. You're inclining towards the sentimental, which is all well and good for a boy. Inclining but... toward what? But the fact is... Our skulls can't afford to be sentimental. We must instead be strong. And when I marry my husband... Marry? Oh, you thought I was asking you to... Not you, you swat. Oh, the ego. <laughs> and when I marry, I shall make it very clear to this person that sentimentality is not on the calendar. He will have to lump it or leave it. And if he should leave, then I shall stay a spinster and pin my hair back and volunteer weekends at hospital. And I love words for their own sake, like hyacinth and piccadilly and onyx. And I'll have a good old dog. Think what I like. Be a part of a different sort of family. With friends, you know who understand that things are only worth what you're willing to give up for them. Even if I, in the face of death, may have, you know... Wanted to? I didn't say that. You got it. Good. Wow. You know, now that you're here, I might just rest my eyes for a little. Did he say it said the sun? Because you could see the sun. If you could see the sky at all. We must be very near to the beach. Come on, boys, we made it. Come to me, ye shipwrecked sailors. Look ye here, ye wave tossed whalers. to lure me, not send them into psychoanalysis, no! We got to plan B, the poisoned fruitcake. Hateful brats arrive, empty beach, tempting morsel, maybe a note, feel free, tuck in. They eat it, they die. They come, Captain! Let's kill us some kitties, Smee! So nasty, so very nasty! So hungry, so very hungry. There's the long boat. But where's Daddy? Get the best of fruit cake here. Get the nice a slice of fruit cake. Oh my gosh, yes! No mm. tag tote! Fresh out the big house, yummy yum yum! Your black stash! My father will have your guts for garters! Ooh! Plan C, me. Boys at the front cake, brats! That was plan B, me. Get rid of it! Wait, just a sliver! Too latey, matey. Plan C. 
Why, we've never even been to Ruffia! I don't care, I can assure you! Oh, what I am, madam, I'll tell you what I am! What's that? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Thank you, Smee. And it is my serious intent to kill this woman until she is dead, and Alfred too, unless you hand over that trunk to me and my nasty crew. You stay right where you are, and I'll see it goes easy for you with my father. Your daddy's not around, dearie, and there's more of us than there are of you. And there's more of us than anyone, but I'll shoot you! No! English, move! Daddy! Oh, Captain Scott, not you too! Ronnie, Ronnie, is that you? Betty? The mistress wants more of her manicotti. And the pasta fajoule? To make you jealous! Oh, Betty! This woman only English kind to me when I was kitchen slave. Oh, Prony, be your prince and let Lord Asta go. You are English. I'll choose my words carefully. No. But, but, Prony! No! English come to my island. Now nature's vows are for Katya! Because of the contents of this trunk, your highness. Release my father and we'll take the trunk off the island. Nature restored, mollusks live happily ever after. Happily ever after, my kebab knife! You, kitty cat, bring the trunk hither or I cut the savage's throat. That's a terrible choice. I have a sacred duty. Oh, well, um, take your time. I'll count to three. Three! 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 What's that? An echo, 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 echo. Excellent effect. The stash is cunning. Cutting, cutting. The stash is beguiling. Guiling, guiling. The stash is supreme. Supreme! I don't think so. You. Me. Peter. Han. He's alive. We're saved. The rusted parry, Peter. Attack, Ulair, <laughs> And so we arrive in the belly of the beast. Teddy, throw it. Yo, think fast. Really? After all that? Prentice! Prentice! Oh my god. What am I doing? Please don't hurt me! I'm just a little kid! I'm not responsible! Is he crying seriously? Oh, wow. Ah! Me hat! Next! Oh, looky Lou, a baby koala! Oh, the koala! Oh, they're just so adorable! Unfair! Say your goodbyes, my dear. Wait, don't you want that trunk? Peter, don't! Are you with me, guys? Gotta save Mother! She's more important than some trunk, even if I never get home. Are we quite done with the hugging and learning? Decision. It's a better world with you in it, Molly. Now let her go. Did you note that, Smee? Did you see it? Genuine, heroic sacrifice. Inspiring, Captain. I've got goose flesh all over. Oh, poor Smee. How flat and unprofitable the world must seem from the deck of the HMS Cynic. Go, lad. Take your precious lady and live another day. My first mission, and I've wrecked it. Now open it, Smee. Open and elaborate. It's. I don't like it. It's bollocks to it. <laughs> Do we detect a pattern here? <laughs> Help me, the linguists among you. What is the turn of phrase? Empty, Captain. The trunk is empty. So it is. Clean as the sheets in a convent. Empty? It can't be empty. You mean all this time? Where's my I treasure? The seawater got in. It must have dissolved. Moose nuggets, gold and diamonds don't dissolve. But star stuff does. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, the molecular framework of star stuff begins to break down when it- Starbucks? Starbucks? What Starbucks? Doesn't matter now. Nobody gets his hands on it. Nobody gets what he wants. Enough of this non-versation. You see, this is exactly why I hate, I hate, I hate. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. 
my god, oh 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 my god, you guys. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um oh my god. Wait. Sir And you are? Smee, sir, you're right hand man! Not anymore, Smee! Not anymore! Thanks in no part! Till this Cuffed in my candy! Crocodile tears, Smee! Oh pine if you would! What am I to do now? I'm stumped, sir! You're stumped. It's all about you, isn't it? Selfie, self, self. I, sir, not me, sir. Then kindly retrieve it. I'm not leaving it here for these children to paw. <laughs> Retrieved, Captain. You, it's me. You sacrificed willingly for the sake of a guild. Girl. girl! And that was majestic. You beat the poets in me, Pan. What say we merge a forger? Forger merger. Thank you, me. <laughs> Picture it. The ultimate pirate and his worthy opponent. Molly fights better than me. I run faster too. And I bet your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, but I'm not interested. Consider the possibilities. Foes forever, adversaries. It's me. Ad never end them. I'm talking books, movies, Broadway. But you just tried to kill me. Don't you get it, Peter? You're my hero. Me? You're the yin to me, yeah. The semi to me, colon. Damn it, boy. You're the wind beneath my clipped wing. Gee, I hadn't really thought. Thanks to you, I am reborn. The complete villain. Oh, what sublime enemies will be. Forget gold. Time. Time will be our treasure. We'll fight for all eternity. We's a couple now, boo. Only if my friends go free. Bravo. Bravissimo. Give the pan a round of applause. It's me a little help. Round of applause. This is all you're doing, ye loathsome pan. You single-handedly rendered me single-handed. Uh, you cut your hand off, not me. Oh, pity the child who lives in a fact-based world. <laughs> you may think my ship has sailed, but I have an armada of options at my former fingertips. <laughs> Perhaps I'll never be a concert violinist or a reliable juggler, but I can still win Wimbledon and I can still destroy you. You've made your bed, Pan. Go on, get the croc. North, northwest. Enormous ticking crocodile, Captain. Back for another snack. Upstaging me still, you snaggletooth show off. Just not your day, sir. Wait. I could use a killer croc on me crew. Bring the beast along, Smee. How am I to let him, sir? Give him the hand, you fool. Hang on. Best make it last. Just give him the finger. <laughs> Adieu, Pan. But believe this. Wherever you call home, keep your back to the wall. For whenever you least expect it, there I'll be. The stash right under your nose. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> You good son, fighting Promelon with that. You shall wear a hat of hero. Now will Ben Moss law, all English go free. You be good to Betty, 
or else I serve you up al dente. Oh, we've made plans, your promise. I got down on bended knee and Mrs. B said... You betcha! Oh, Betty's bound for bridal bliss! Aye. The ATMS bum break made a few barnacles on a bottom, but I will scrape them clean off. Don't speak, dearie! Oh, goodbye, Pronny. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Or my language, TIRAMASU! TIRAMASU! Well then, old sport, it's back to England. Then I can finally set my sights on the South Pole. The Antarctic. Oh, my name's not Robert Falcon Scott. Trump to the longboat. Good luck, Captain. Don't let the Norwegians beat you to it. Nobody beats the British, little girl. Rubidania! Not a little girl. A full-fledged starcatcher. A full-fledged starcatcher? Oh, just like my wonderful father. She deserves it, sir. Molly's the real hero. Thanks, Peter. Mission fulfilled. We're headed home. And you'll come with us. Oh, can't they, Daddy? Can't the boys come home with us? Mother! I told you. And teacher said all I needed to get home was star stuff. Ha, wrong. Who? Who's teacher? This tricked out mermaid. Well, actually, she was a fish, but she swam into the grotto, and now we're going home. Wait, what grotto? The one with the golden water. Did you go in that water? Yeah, it was great. All warm and tingly. The star stuff. And you soaked in it. We can't do this. But it already dissolved in the waves. The waves that turned fish into mermaids. I'm sorry, Peter. We can't take you with us. Why? What did I do? But he isn't evil or greedy, and he isn't... We don't know what he is, or what he wants to be. I just want to be a boy for a while. It's all I ever wanted. There, you see? With star stuff, a while could be a very long time. But I'll be good, I promise. The boy deserves a home. Of course he does, but... Wait. Leonard, old man, you're getting slow. Peter, one of your mermaid is right. She wasn't right, and neither are you. Grown-ups lie. They lie and then they leave. I thought she said the star stuff was all you needed to get home. But I'm still here. Precisely. Did she say anything else? She said I needed a name, so she gave me one. Pan. Pan as in all, probably. All? Your family name, understand? The whole island. Or oh, the ants on the beach, or oh, the birds in the air, the mermaids, the mollusks, the pirates, and the boys too, of course, especially the boys. They're all your family. And how does that make you feel? Like I'm finally out of the dark. There's a name for that feeling, Peter. Home. And here you are. And here, he'll stay. Yeah, me too, totally count me in. You didn't want to be alone, did ya? Oh, this is just so unacceptable. We asked us do not leave boys behind. Well, that crazy bird's after me again. Leave me alone. Stop, don't hurt that bird. You're going to need something to protect you. Now, it seems to me, if we take the last of the star stuff like so, and so vigorously, I think it's uh, anti-clockwise. Peter, lend me a hand, whip them around. The hat's getting all warm and tingly, just like, and so. Wizard. Oh, my hair! Come here, you! I can totally do that trick. Teddy, don't eat it! Nice to know I've still got it. If you really wanted to protect him, you take him with us. I'm afraid it's time for goodbyes. Be a woman. This is my address in London. You don't have to write me every day or anything. Just when you feel like it. Well, you know my address, Molly Island. Mollusk Island, you mean? Or maybe I'll call it Neverland, you know, to remember. Hat of Hero, wear it when you get home, to remember. To remember. Molly, now, the tide won't wait. I want you to look after Prentice and Teddy. In five more minutes, come on, a bedtime story. Tell me, Molly, tell me. There'll be other tides, won't there? You see, she wants to stay. She can't. But I don't want it to end. Soon, Peter. You'll forget, and it won't hurt anymore. No! It's supposed to hurt. That's how you know it meant something. This isn't the end. You're going to remember everything, every single detail. And you're a better leader. Really? No. You won't stay mad at me forever, will you? Go on. Get lost. I'm bound to grow up, see? What would we do? Be friends. In a year, that'd be hard. In five years, it would be silly, and in twenty, it would just be sad. You sound older already. That thing you did, against impossible odds, 
It's what you two will always have. The thing we did. Against impossible odds. Yes, I wanted to. Peter watches the wasp get smaller and smaller, and he thinks about his adventure, about Molly, and about that kiss. It was the only time that Peter would teeter on the top of the worldly coaster, on the verge of becoming what he always hated, a grown-up. And as promised, he began to forget and stayed right where he was, the outsider. Molly, true to her word, would remember everything until one night many years later. She sat out the nursery window watching Peter fly off with her daughter and her. And this grown-up Molly would tend to her new Nana, a good old dog who tended to the children. Don't worry, Nana, darling. I always hoped when Peter came to visit that my daughter would take my place. And once Wendy grows up... I hope she will have a daughter of her own. A little girl who will go off with him in turn. She wants me to race you down to the grotto. Look, Stash sliced it open. Mm, oh, yes. Mm. It's hard to believe oh, you're still yes. single. Wait, mm. how can I race him to the grotto if I can't run? Whoa, 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 I can what? What'd she say? What'd she say? To have faith is to have wings. Wait a minute, did you say grotto? How'd you like to just be a boy for a while? The star stuff water can do that. It makes you what you want to be. A lawyer? Guys, this is going to be one awfully big adventure. All right, you said it. Ready? Ready, Ready set, set.